ride around, two for a dip, and a family trip. These are just some of the prizes that can be won on tonight's edition of 321. Now, ladies and gentlemen, your host, Ted Rogers. Well, a super audience, thank you very much indeed, and good evening, everybody at home. Welcome, as always, to 321. And by the way, if you're trying that, be careful, because it can be habit forming. <laughs> now, a lady said to me that since her husband started doing that, he's been late for work every morning. It now takes him two hours and 20 minutes just to do up a zip. <laughs> I said, Well, didn't you give me a hand? She said, Yeah, but I can't stop doing it either. <laughs> and you know what it's like, one thing led to another, so now he has to zip up his own boots. <laughs> We're glad you joined us once again, 4-3-2-1. You know, we always do say this is so. We can't start our show without a certain group of people and a little character. The fly in the ointment up here at Yorkshire TV. If they didn't show, we wouldn't have a show. Say hello to our contestants. Here they are. <laughs> yes, indeed. There he is. As always, he's hanging around here. And I'm sure I don't have to remind you, he is the booby prize. If he's won, all our contestants take home is a brand new dustbin. That's all they get. So let's forget about you, D Dusty, for the moment. Off you go. Let's find out who our contestants are from Linda Lee Lewis. Linda? Hello, hey, Ted. yes. <laughs> Lovely. Hey. Like that. Don't you like that? That's nice. Don't come and your heart out. You can do more than that for me. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. Who do we have tonight? Right, we have Graham and Jan Meach from Bro Brooklands Park in Hertfordshire, Paul and Glynis Gallion from Leek in Stafford, and Dave and Jackie Waring from Lancashire. There you are. Right. Yeah, that's lovely. Good. <laughs> Lancashire. Lancashire. And Rishton, which is sort of Blackburn, Bolton, Burnley. Isn't it that area? Yeah, that way. Yeah. Let's chat to you, Jackie. You, you stay at home or you work or what? No, I work. I'm the manager of a large card shop. I reckon they all have cards for much bigger events, you know, like uh, congratulations on getting directory inquiries. That ought to be good. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you ever tried that? <laughs> For you. And Dave, uh, what, what sort of business are you in? Um, I'm in the tufting trade, carpet manufacturing. We overall machinery and yeah. knock them back out into the uh, the world of the tufting industry. Yeah. And what about your hobbies, Dave? What do you do? Um, not so much as I used to be, but uh, main hobbies now: martial arts and uh, drag racing. Really, drag right? martial arts. Yeah. I, I was a green belt. Yeah. Uh, it didn't mean I can beat any. You just can't build on me. That's all it means. <laughs> 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 anyway, it's nice you're here. Now, Paul and Glenis Gallon are from Leeks in Staffordshire, which... Leek in Staffordshire? A gallon from Leek? I've heard of a leek from ga a gallon, never a... Anyway. <laughs> what do you do for a living? Don't say plumbing, please, Paul. What do you do? Uh, no, I'm a teacher in a special school, New House Special School, uh -huh. um, for physically handicapped children. Do you have children, anyway? Yes, two girls. Two girls. A mm -hmm. couple of gallons and two half pints. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Graham and Jan Meach, who are from Brookman's Park, which is sort of Potter's Bar Way in Hertfordshire, yes? That's right. Yes. Uh -huh. And Graham, what, do you, what sort of work do you do? Uh, Self-employed motor trader. Yes. <laughs> yes, what? Well, motor trader. He's laughing himself. Buy and sell cars. Hey, the buy and sell cars, yeah? Yes. New ones and, and, and used ones? Mostly used within the trade. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and how about, what do you do for uh, hobbies? Do you do anything sort of... Uh, quite a bit of golf. Uh, golf, yeah. Struggle with snooker. That's uh -huh. the thing, yes. <laughs> how about you then, Jan? How, how did you two meet? We met in a wimpy bar. <laughs> in a wimpy bar? <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah, yeah I was with a friend and I fancied his brother. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy his brother? Yes. Oh, great. But I had the car. <laughs> oh, yes. See? He's a motor man to the end. And we hope you're going to do very well tonight. I'm sure you will. Anyway, sit back and enjoy yourselves. Now, you know, with our quiz, we always give you £10 to start with, all right? Now, you get £10 for each correct answer in the first round. Whatever you win at the end of the first round, of course, is what you get for each correct answer in the second round. And, of course, if one couple was lucky enough to get two maximums, of course, they could go home with £1,650 from the quiz alone. General knowledge questions on the buzzer. When you think you know the answer, hit the buzzer. Please wait until I say your name. Answer. You have three seconds to do so. If you fail to come up with an answer in that time, I will say on offer. The other couples have a chance to go for the question. Again, hit the buzzer, wait until I say your name. If they're wrong, the question will go into the bin. We want ten correct answers in the first round. So put your hands by the buzzer if you wish, as long as they're not over them, that's all. Here's the first question. Who won the 1987 FA Cup final? Dave and Jackie. Everton. No, that's wrong, so it's on offer. That's Graham and Jan. Coventry. Coventry City, it was. They did a great job, yes. Before 1971, what letter was used to denote a penny? Paul and Glenis. D. D is correct. LSD seems a long time ago, doesn't it? Next question. How many articles are there in a score? That's Paul and Glenis. 
20. 20 is right. What kind of food takes the name Dundee? Graham and Jan? Cake. A cake, of course, is right. In what sport do we hear the terms birdie, eagle and albatross? That is Paul and Glennis. Golf. Golf, of course. Where do you most often see pieces of glass called cat's eyes? Paul and Glennis. In the road. In the road, the centre of the road or on the side of the road is right. What season is called Noel? Graham and Jan? Uh, winter. Uh, that is wrong, so it's on off. That's Paul and Glennis? Christmas. Christmas is the, yes, it was the right area, but that was what we wanted, Christmas. Who skated with Christopher Dean? <laughs> Hello, you okay, Paul and Glennis of Jane Torville. Sorry? Jane Torville. Jane Torville is right, in the TV spectacular Fire and Ice, but we didn't get that far. Next question, what piece of furniture did King Arthur preside over? That's Dave and Jackie. Round table. Ray, round table is right. What meat forms the basis of the dish chili con carne? That's Paul and Glennis. Mince. Uh, that's wrong, so on offer. Dave and Jackie. Beef. Beef is what we wanted. We actually wanted beef. You see, you can mince up everything, and that was our tenth question. So at the end of the first round, what do we have here? We've got Graham and Jan and Dave and Jackie both on 30 pounds, but in the lead at the moment, we have Paul and Glennis, 70 pounds they have. Well done. Nice one so far. And you'll be pleased to hear you can sit back and relax before our second round because we have our newcomer, 2 3 two, one. And this week is the turn of a young fella. Actually, he's been heard on many of the Brian Rogers vocals. He's out on his own right today and he's backing himself also on keyboards. A great talent with a new number called Body Rock. Welcome, Peter Beckett. Terrific job, either. Well done, Pete. Lovely. 
Now, here we are, folks. Round two. Three, two, one. And we've got Graham and Jan, Dave and Jackie. You go for 30 pounds for each correct answer this time. Paul and Glennis, you're going for 70 pounds for each correct answer. So, jolly good luck to all of you. Exactly the same rules as before, except this time we have 15 questions we want answered. And I'm afraid we do have to say goodbye to the couple with the lowest amount of money at the end of the quiz. But sit back and have a real good go. Here we go. Here's the first question. In the Old Testament, name the giant who was killed by David. That's Graham and Jan. Goliath. Goliath is right. He was stoned out of his mind. <laughs> According to the Scots, where the Sassanacs come from, that is Paul and Glennis. England. England is correct. Next question, what is a Havana? <laughs> Graham and Jan? A cigar. Cigar, of course. What musical instrument in particular did George Formby play? <laughs> Paul and Glennis? A banjo. That's wrong. So it's on off, and it's Graham and Jan? A ukulele. Ukulele. It's a little smaller. Next question, who created the character of Rocky on the screen? Dave and Jackie. Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester yes, Stallone. Yes, you can say it. You said it indeed. Sylvester Stallone. What is a mural painted on? That's Graham and Jan. A wall. A wall is correct. Yes, indeed. In the Wild West, what was Boot Hill? Paul and Glennis. Graveyard. The graveyard, of course, is right. What football team are nicknamed the Gunners? Paul and Glennis. Arsenal. Arsenal, indeed. Next question, what member of the animal kingdom is a must hang? Graham and Jan. A horse. A horse, indeed, a wild horse. What do the Americans mean by Veep or VP? <laughs> Graham and Jan's had a go. Very important person. No, that's wrong. So it is on offer if you want to have a go. You don't lose any money. Anybody having a, want to have a go? Paul and Glass? Vice President. Absolutely right, Paul. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's as simple as that. Vice President is right. Next question. Who, according to the Bible story, built an ark? So that's Paul and Glennis. Noah. Noah, indeed. What was the original name of the boxer Muhammad Ali? Graham and Jan? Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay. What a fighter he was. Who resigned as British Prime Minister in March in 1976? <laughs> Graham and Jan? <sighs> Sorry. Yes, indeed. That's three seconds are up. So I can say, cancel that. On off. Dave and Jackie have had Is a go. Harold Wilson? It was indeed Harold Wilson, yes. According to the old song, who do you ask if you want to know the time? <laughs> Graham and Jan? A policeman. A policeman. Yeah, we go back a bit, don't we, Graham? <laughs> Last question. Here's the 15th question. Which Queen of France is supposed to have said, let them eat cake? That's Paul and Glennis? Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette. That's right, of course. <laughs> hey, at the end of our quiz this week, we've got Dave and Jackie on 90 pounds. Graham and Jan have 240, but the winners of our quiz, Paul and Glennis have got 490 pounds. That's good. <laughs> Dave and Jackie. Oh, you uh, thank you. It's been smashing having you with us, especially to hear your delightful accents. They're really terrific. <laughs> I, Bolton, Blackburn and Burnley. I really love that. It sounds so American to me. It's knocking. Have you enjoyed yourself? Yes, we have. Yeah. It's been it's great having you with us. Please sit back and enjoy the rest of the Thanks show. Thanks very much. Let's have a kiss. Mm. Give them a round of applause. Didn't they do a good job? <laughs> Lovely. We're going away for a break. We'll be back very soon. Three, two, one. Don't go far, will you? <laughs> One with Graham and Jan, who were from Brookman's Park in Hertfordshire, playing in this part of the show against Paul and Glennis, who are from Leek in Staffordshire. Now, you know what's about to happen here. We're going to show you three acts. At the end of each one of them, one of our guests is going to come here, or maybe two or three, and leave a clue object and read a rhyme. When we have three of them on the table, you choose one to reject if you are the lucky couple who gets through our elimination question. Good luck to you. We're going to have act number one. And here's two fellows who've made quite a name for themselves on the sophisticated cabaret scene. I can truthfully say, once seen, never forgotten, always rebooked. Please welcome Kit and the Widow. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. At the piano forte, can I present the Widow? Oh, look. <laughs> Clothes by Jonathan Ross, hair by Lionel Blair. Face by Zanussi. Thank you. In my turn, may I introduce my partner, Kit, who, as you can see from his delicate features, is quite obviously the thinking woman's Barry Manilow. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, earlier this year, Kit and I did a very glamorous date in the alpine ski resort of St. Moritz. It was a little village in which the widow picked up a number of things, amongst which was... Um... <laughs> 
This, this very charming, we thought, little folks lead. Yes, it's a lovely song all about love in the high Alps. Der Matterhorn, for the linguists among you, which, because it's written in the very obscure Sweet Deutsch Argo, we thought it best the widow translate as we go along. A song of love. Do hope you enjoy it. <laughs> in the cafe sah ich die wunderschönen Roselei. The poet espies his beloved. <laughs> Lächelnd in the Sonnenschein. She is like Julie Andrews. <laughs> Mit sein Wünde knocken fein. <laughs> she is comely. <laughs> in the cafe, sag ich, willst du drink das goldene reine Wein? Willst du bitte? How about a bitter? Find a knock in fine. The poet suggests a bit of slap and tickle. <laughs> There's a lonely cuckoo. <laughs> in the cafe. Haben wir getrunken ein Opolotopock? Legless komm ein Kuckucklock. Got in Himmel, got a shock. That local brew is fiery. <laughs> in the cafe, sag ich, bist du viel mein kleiner alten Stock? Und Bob sagt, nein, denn doch auch du wirst die Schweiner. Üben groben Stock. <laughs> the poet's suggestion is indecent. <clears throat> <laughs> Why, there's that lonely cooker again. <laughs> In the cafe, grosser Olga, fuck it off. Und sag to me, titten von der wollen sie, sag er dort der duty free. Another maiden approaches the poet. <laughs> this one is like Christopher Plummer. <laughs> In the cafe can ich nicht mehr drink the wine at Apreski mit mein Rosa. Für now ich have ein Dosa. And no longer bear the thought of cheese fondue. Find a in fine. Get the widow. Yeah, good to see you. And uh, yes, I, do I have to say the widow? I know it's Richard, but do I have to say the widow? Yes. Well, you can say widow if you know him well. I don't time, really know him well. Kit and the widow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to leave these folks as the clue here? Well, the clue is a bunch of keys. Okay, a bunch of got. keys. And, and the, the rhyme says the what? The couplet yep. goes: Those moments past, the memory lingers. It's always at the tip of your fingers. That's rather appropriate, isn't it? That's the very first one, ladies and gentlemen. Kit and the widow. Good luck on the trip. Thanks, Kit. Thank you. All the best. Kit and the widow. Love it. Quite nice, yes. A bit of chat going on here. What do you say, Graham? Too early? Much too early. <laughs> <laughs> but do you think anything about it? I think that could be the car. Oh, the really? Car keys. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Fingers, keys the fingers steering wheel. Yeah. Keep thinking about it. We're going to have act number two. Now then, here's our dancing regulars. Great kids they really are, with a number called Private Dance, that very sultry number, sung by Janet Lloyd. Welcome, please, the Brian Rogers Connection. <laughs> Mind on the money, keeping your 
I mean, we see these great dance routines. We don't know you can sing like that. It was really knockout, wasn't it? That? And Jerry Zuccarello, who featured highly in that. Did I get that right? Yes, sir. Good. What are you leaving me here is the clue? Um, a battery charger. A battery charger is the clue this time. And the rhyme, oh, look at their faces. <laughs> what does the rhyme say? Light on fuel, a regular model, this one. Large boot, so ideal for that weekly run. There you go. That is number two. Very easy. Janet Lloyd, congratulations. Bye-bye, Thank Jan. Thanks a lot. Janet Lloyd with the Brian Rogers Connection. So Sorry? You say that? They're both that cars. They, they're both cars. Busy, yes. Oh, well, it'd be nice if they're all cars this week. What, what did you say? Weekly run out to the dustbin. Yeah, oh, good. Oh, so yeah. we've got two cars and two bins, haven't we, at the moment? Well, we, we, we're doing all right. Keep thinking about it because the next one, remember, is going to be the third one on the table. Then you've got to choose what you're going to reject if you get through. Here we go then. Here's the young man. He's doing very, very well indeed. Thank you very much. He hails from the Emerald Isle and he's gone away from the traditional style of Irish humour. He's as modern as today. Will you please welcome Adrian Walsh? <laughs> Please, please. Oh, I'm not that good, you know. <laughs> I've got to tell you something. I've just been sitting in the dressing room and I've been reading an article which actually said that highly intelligent people are slightly deaf. Has anybody read that? No. no. You'll have to speak up. I can't hear you. No. <laughs> but you know the thing I find about the more you read, the more confusing life becomes. How confusing. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> Because as I travel around the country, you know, I went down a road last week and there was a road sign at the bottom of this. You're not going to believe it. Do you know what it actually said? If this sign is underwater, the road is closed. <laughs> I went into a supermarket this morning and I seen a sign again. Do you know what it said? It said, please do not fondle the fruit. Ask for Julie. <laughs> not only signs are confusing, I think the way we talk sometimes is really stupid. 
<laughs> I called this lady over. I said, could you direct me to Yorkshire Television? Oh, she said, that's easy, son. She said, you go straight up the road and turn left where the church used to be. <laughs> Never forget the first time I went to London. I was sitting in a tube train. And I said to the fellow in front of me, I said, can you tell me where Regent's Park is? He said, that's simple. He said, watch me and get off the stop before I do. <laughs> And it's the same the world over, you know. Last February, I was cruising. Oh, that's great cruising. Ooh, we finished up in Mexico. Now, that is unbelievable, Mexico. It really is. You need a sombrero to protect your top, and you need antibiotics to protect your bottom. <laughs> See, and you had to pay for them as well. That's where we're lucky, because we have got the national health system. Although that's in a bad way at the minute, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> Nowadays, you've got to phone up and book an appointment. Am I right? Yes. Have you ever heard anything as ridiculous in all your life? Excuse me, doctor. I'm thinking of being ill on September the 23rd. <laughs> and when you phone up the doctor, do you ever get to speak to the doctor? No. Why not? Receptionist. This woman hates you, doesn't she? This woman has been drummed out of the Gestapo for cruelty. <laughs> you phone her up and what does she say to you? What do you want? <laughs> I'd like two tickets to Phantom of the Opera, if possible, please. <laughs> I'm sick, you idiot. I'm sick. And then what does she say? Well, isn't it an emergency? <laughs> Not really. I'm lying underneath a truck on the M4. <laughs> I eventually get in to see the doctor, and oh, have I got a strange doctor. Strange. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> He examined me and said, well, Doc, what do you think, Doc? He said, you know, Adrian, he said, you've actually caught a disease that's been extinct for 50 years. I said, I probably got it from one of your magazines in the waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and good night. Well done, Adrian. Oh, that's good. There you are. Lovely. See that? Yeah. Thank you. I told you they were good, didn't I? You did indeed. Hey, you did listen. Indeed. Good to see you. What are you leaving with the clue here? A driving glove. Driving glove. Here you are. Huh? Just to make you think of another car. There we are. <laughs> All right, that's the third one. And what does the third ride say? Now, listen to this one. Quite simple. Four wheels designed to carry the load. Your handicap comes when not on the road. There you are. That's the third one on the table. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Adrian Walsh. Thank Adrian. You. Cheers, thank mate. You. Thanks, well done. Thank you. Now then. There's a bit of chat going on. What? Golf. Golf, yes. Yeah, yes, that's okay. Oh, so it's not a car, that one. That's good. No, no, that one's We've only got two cars so far. That's good. I'll tell you what, we have three. As we've got three here, I can read the first two again. Now, remember? Okay, the bunch of keys came in, item number one from Kit and the Widow. They said, those moments passed, the memory lingers, it's always at the tip of your fingers. That was number one. Okay? That's Battery. Keyboard. Sorry? Keyboard. Mm. Is it? Oh, great. That's good. Well, we've got keyboard and, yeah, right, and, and golf clubs. So we've already <laughs> lost a car and I haven't even read this one out yet. <laughs> OK, this is uh, item number two. This came in from Janet Lloyd of the Brian Rogers Connection. She left a battery charger and said, light on fuel, a regular model, this one. Large boot, so ideal for that weekly run. Here yeah. Very tricky. Very devious. Yeah. Three on the table. You've got to choose one now to reject. I think we'll get rid of the driving glove. You want to get rid of the driving glove? How the about glove. Graham and Jan? What do you the say? Well. We'll, we'll go with the others. You're going to get a glove. Is that all right with you, Jan? Yes. Yes? All right. Whoever gets through the question, then the driving glove will be rejected. Right. Here is the elimination question. Put your hands, please, near the buzzers, not on them, please. When you think you know the question, the answer to the question, you hit the buzzer. And if you're wrong, of course, I can offer it to the other couple. And if they're right, well, then they will go straight through. I'll continue reading till somebody gets it. Good luck to you. This female television personality used to read the news. Hello, Graham's gone for it straight away. Angela Rippon. No, that's not right, so I can offer it to Paul and Glennis. What are you going to take a chance on? You won't get knocked out here. If you're wrong, I will continue reading. Jan Leeming. Jan Leeming, no, that's also wrong. So I'm going to continue reading. <laughs> he was determined to get in there. Here we go. She once turned down £75,000. OK, Jan's gone for it. Yes. Um, Quick, it's got to come out. Anna Ford. Anna Ford is right, yes. Oh! That was a good memory. That was a very good memory job, that. You couldn't get the name out straight I away. Do you know it. why she turned down £75,000? Uh, 
Yeah. It was to appear boy. in, yes, yeah. not, not that oh, magazine, but Paul yeah. Raymond's <laughs> magazine. Anyway, congratulations. That means you are through. We know what you've rejected. We do have to say goodbye to Paul and Glennis right here and now, but Jerry Zuccarella is here with the money. Hey, Jerry, what they win in the quiz? I said, yeah, Paul and Glennis have won £490. £490, they've got. That's good, eh? Yeah. 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 Yes. And if you uh, take a look across there, please, Linda has for you the consolation prize. Take a look at that. It's the world's first fully automatic 35mm leaf shutter camera to integrate a macro to telephoto power zoom and flash. Everything is done for you. All you've got to do is to point it. So there you are. Very good indeed. Paul, congratulations. Glenn, it's just a Smash it. There you go. Give him a round of applause, folks. Well done. Well done to you. Yeah, Graham, we've got through. This is going to be rejected, right? The yes. driving club. When we come back after the break, we'll be back after the break with Gordon Scott, Stan Baldwin. Stay with us on 3, 2, 1. Of course you can. Welcome to part three of three, two, one. Here we've got Graham and Jan who are from Brookman's Park in Hertfordshire. And great, we had about two or three cars, I think, didn't we? <laughs> but we rejected this one here, which was the driving glove. You think that's not a car? No. You think? Well, it's not. A, do you think it's a bin? No, I don't think the bin's come here. You don't think it's arrived yet? Well, it's been it's rejected. Golf. It's what? Golf. Definitely golf, says Jan. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Adrian Walsh brought this in, item number three, a driving glove, and said four wheels designed to carry the load. Your handicap comes when not. On the road. Yes, they say. Oh, look at them. Yes, sir. absolutely sure now. Four wheels designed to carry the load. Well, that, of course, could start you thinking about a car, particularly as the clue object was a driving glove, but there was only one, uh, not a pair. Your handicap comes when not on the road. Combine handicap with only one driving glove. You're absolutely right. It is golf. Take a look at this. Yes, to the lady driver, the vehicle that would have presented no parking problems. A sporting golf trolley carrying her own personal set of clubs and a smart golf bag. And for the gentleman, his own golf trolley, a set of the finest clubs, a golf bag and a set of waterproofs. It would have been part of the course, yes. Yeah, you were right, absolutely right on that one. The pair of you, it's been rejected, so please take it away, it's got to go. Well done, good, you got rid of that. And you, uh, you had golf clubs, yeah. Yes, thanks. Yes, thanks. <laughs> you, you didn't need any more. But there you are. You were right. Let's hope you're going to be right with the rest of them. Just keep thinking, Ben, right? We're going to have act number four. It's a musical item this time. All the ingredients of that great number shaft. Four different instruments played by one fella. Gordon Scott's with us.
I bet you, I bet you wouldn't mind having a group like that travelling with oh, you all the time, yeah, eh? Yeah. yeah, pretty good muse, though. Yeah, it's got to be better looking, I think. Oh, oh, terrific well, stuff, that. Great. What are you yeah. going to leave these folks there? A bit worried what you're going to leave? Well, we've got this decorated tile. OK, that's the clue for them yeah, this time. Put that there. Yes, if you would. And what does their rhyme say? World away to an excitement new, side by side, designed just for you. OK, that is the fourth one. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank Gordon Scott. Good luck, Gordon. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thank you. Oh, look at, look, at, look at the way Jan's looking at me. What are you looking at me like that for? What do you think about that one? I think that could either be a kitchen yeah. or a holiday. Really? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, we've got three on the table. I can read one of the other two again. Would you like to refresh your memory on the keys or the, the charger here? Which one would you like to hear? Um, Semi made up her mind for this ho ho. Yeah. But the charger, we wouldn't mind hearing again. You want to hear this one again? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. All right, this came in then. Item. Number the two from Janet Lloyd, or the Brian Rogers connection, the battery charger. She said, light on fuel, a regular model, this one. Large boot, so ideal for, the weekly, for that weekly run. Right. What, what are you going to do? Well, I think these two are probably pretty nice prizes. Pretty nice, <laughs> yes, yes. And that could be the bin. The could it? Boot. Yeah, well, I don't think he's sure yet. I don't think once a week is a car. We'll let that go. Yeah. You can let it go? Yeah. yeah oh, yes. You. Oh, well. <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> well, Please. I don't think the audience are with you on this one at all. I <laughs> you, it's going to go, is it? I've not opened it yet. Yes. 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 Okay, you're going to eject then item number two. Janet brought you in the battery charger. Light on fuel, a regular model. This one, large boots, so ideal for that weekly run, is what she said. Now then, light on fuel, a regular model. This one, of course, that could suggest a car, but did it? At least something mobile. The clue object was a battery charger. Suggests, of course, it runs on battery. The final clues are in the last line. Large boots, so ideal for that weekly run. Well, there's only one thing on the show that has large boots. Weekly run. You've done it. It's Dustin <laughs> Finn. Yeah. <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> yes. Oh, great. OK, that means a good prize goes home with you tonight. Good luck to you. We're going to have our very last item. And it's great for me to introduce this next character. He's a great comedian. He's hit the headlines on more than one occasion. All I can say is, if your ancestor is Teutonic, you've just got to grin and bear it. It's Stan Boardman. <laughs> oh. oh, that's great. Uh... Are we doing all right? <laughs> yeah. Get off. Get off. <laughs> Shut up, we haven't told a joke yet. <laughs> I was in Liverpool yesterday, and I was walking down Lime Street, and this, someone shouted, Stop, thief! And everyone started running. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in court in Liverpool last week, and I was sitting there, and I was watching all the, all the fellas getting put down and all that, you know. And uh, this fella come up in front of the judge, and the judge said, Do you recognise this course? He said, Why has it been Zachary's? <laughs> the judge said, Have you been up here before me before? He said, I don't know what time you get up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's this Liverpool fella, he'd been brought up in front of the judge for pinching a coat. And the judge said, You were up before me three years ago for pinching a coat. <laughs> the fella said, how long do you think coats last? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a, a mate of mine's got a butcher's shop in Liverpool, a butcher's, and he's an Irish butcher. Uh, <laughs> he hangs the mince up. <laughs> 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 and, uh, no, and a fella come in, he said, uh, uh, a pound of bacon. And the butcher went, lean back. <laughs> <laughs> and he couldn't sell any meat. He couldn't sell any meat. So my mate said, the best thing to do, he said, is to turn it into an antique shop. He said, but I've got all that meat. He said, don't worry. He said, this is what we do. He said, we got the sheep's eye. And he put the sheep's eye in the window. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, you're a bad. 
And he puts the sheep's eye there with me. And, and this Jamin was walking past. Him. <laughs> and underneath the sheep's eye, he put Nelson's eye. See? And the Jamin went, oh, Nelson's eye. You know, in Jamin. <laughs> and he went to the butcher, and he says to the butcher, Nelson's eye, how much is it? He said, uh, 50 mark. <laughs> he said, love it, wrap it up. So we took it home. The next day, he said, that was good. And the butcher said, great. He said, get a sheep's leg. Put a sheep's leg in the window. Put underneath Nelson's leg. <coughs> and the Jamie was walking past like that. And he went in and he said, uh, what's his das? <laughs> <laughs> Because he speaks German. <laughs> he said, what's his das? He said, we don't sell washing powder. <laughs> he said, that, that's Nelson's leg. He said, what's the cost? He said, uh, 50 fennings. He said, love it. So he wraps up. So the next day, my mate gets these two potatoes, little potatoes like that. And... <laughs> Puts him in the window, and this Jamin comes back the next day, like that, you know. And he looked in the window, and he went to the butchers. He said, "Hey," <laughs> <laughs> he said, "They're not Nelsons." He said, "They're not the King Edwards." <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Good night, and God bless. There he is, Stanley. Good night, mate. Lovely. All right. All right. Lovely. <laughs> it's nice. Oh, by the way, have you told them that there's two dusty bins on this show this there week? Are. Listen, they've got, they, they got enough trouble. <laughs> Lovely to see you, mate. I don't care what you say, I still think Jimmy Greaves is the greatest. Anyway, <laughs> what are you going to leave these folks as the clue here? Well, I've got some cheese. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a portion of feta cheese. Okay. Right, there you go. I'll put that down there. Right, that's and the right. Uh, here's the clue. <laughs> don't do it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> must be Ronnie Regan, I think, here. <laughs> Once you're on board this mini cruise, you stand to win. If not, you lose. That's the last one tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Stan Boardman, Chan. Thank you, Chan. All the best, Thank mate. You. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Stan Boardman. What's that? Well, it's a cruise, is it? Great. Graham's not too sure about it. That's it's changed. Just great. obvious, that's yeah. what I thought. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was a bit obvious, yeah. Well, three on the table. The final three. You're lucky the bin's gone. I can read one of the other two again to refresh your memory. What would you like to hear? Yeah. Is this the fingertips that's one? That's the fingertip one. And we think that's the Passing keyboard. Passing yeah. so we'll listen to that. You want to listen to this? Yeah. OK, this came in item number four from Gordon Scott. A decorated tile. He said, world away to an excitement new, side by side, designed just for you. Final three on the table. You're in a good position. One has to be rejected now. Whatever you choose to go, will go. So what will it be? Reasonably assertive. Uh, we'll dump this one. So we're Are you sure? Do that one, Graham, yeah. yes? Oh, stop sure. it. Oh, stop it. Is it going to go? Yes? Yeah. All right, Jan? Oh, Is it going to go now? Come on. Yeah? Yes, we'll right. reject that one. You're Thank rejecting you. a bunch of keys. Came in item number one from Kit and the Widow. Those moments passed, the memory lingers. It's always at the tip of your fingers, is what they said. Oh, Those goodness. moments passed, the memory lingers. Well, that might start you thinking about something, maybe like a video camera. We'll recall those moments you never want to forget. The clue object was a bunch of keys. That leads to it's always at the tip of your fingers. A bunch of keys always at the tip of your fingers suggests a keyboard. You were right there. That can recall memories. Yes, you're absolutely right. It's a computer setup. Look at this. Oh, Yes, a complete computer setup comes complete with a color television screen, dot matrix printer, twin disk drives, a mouse, and a 512K memory. And as a bonus, there's an executive writer software filing system. Put it under that. Yes. Well mm. nice. Very nice. Yeah. Final two on the table, of course. I can read them both again. So again, try and really think on these. This one was brought in, item number four from Gordon Scott, the decorated tile. World away to an excitement new, side-by-side, -side, designed just for you, is what he said. Item number five came in from Stan Boardman, a portion of feta cheese. Stan said, once you're on board this mini cruise, you stand to win. If not, you lose. So, I there you are. I think it's got to be the whole thing. 
It's got to be the holiday. What, what, to, to, to yeah, keep? if you don't win choose what? it, you lose it. Oh, if you don't wish well, yeah. it, yeah, I'll go well, with if, that. If you reject it, you do lose it, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we were more or less decided on this anyway. Um, we're going to get rid of the tile and uh, hopefully go on holiday. Really? <laughs> you want to get rid of the tile and hopefully go on holiday? All right, I don't want to say it anymore, but he's going. Yeah? <laughs> yes. Right, OK, you are rejecting then item number four, the decorated tile which came in from Gordon Scott. World away to an excitement new side-by-side -side design just for you, if I can open it. Now then. World away to an excitement new, that could suggest a holiday of some kind, trip by a helicopter maybe. The clue object was a decorated tile which suggests it might be something for the home. You thought about this. That leads to side by side designed just for you. And you, will be, you would have been sitting side by side in this exclusive Whirlpool bath. Take a look. <laughs> Would have been the height of luxury. Your own exclusive Whirlpool bath, double size with back supports and headrests at each end. You could have selected your own colour and made your own choice from a selection of ornate fittings. And there would have been more to come. An expert would have redesigned your bathroom to accommodate this amazing prize. Oh, Jan. Oh. What a prize. Fabulous. It has to go. Take it away, please. Oh, Jan, I, I think maybe, by the look of you, you'd have liked that one, yeah? Yes. However, this is the prize you're going home with. Item number five, a portion of feta cheese brought in by Stan Boardman. What do you think of this? Holiday. Okay. Grace. Well, once you're on board this mini cruise, he said, you stand to win. If not, you lose. What is it? Once you're on board this mini cruise, that's obviously got something to do with the trip at sea, but where? Well, the clue object was a portion of feta cheese, which is, of course, Greek. You said so. That leads to you stand to win, if not, you lose. Well, there's only one form of mini-cruise where standing up on board is important because if you don't fall in, it's, it's a windsurfing holiday in Greece. Yes! Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, you want a fabulous holiday for the whole family on the beautiful Greek island of Scythius. Your hotel, overlooking the beach, of course, with its own swimming pools, sauna and hairdressers, while the air-conditioned rooms cool the heat of the midday sun. The island has a reputation for its water sports, so to take full advantage, before you go, you'll be given vouchers worth £200, allowing you to windsurf and water ski as often as you wish. A holiday you won't forget, and the Greeks have a word for it, fantastic. I think the English have the same word, don't they? The Brits do. Let's go and get your prize, come on. OK, there you go, Jan, Graham. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Smash it. And as always, don't forget, just a little money to help you on the way that you won in the quiz. What was it, Jerry? £240. Pounds. £240 pounds they won. Good. Well done. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Have a smashing time, Graham. Graham, you too. Have a really good time. You've been smashing contestants, as always. Thank you. Thank you to all our guests, all our marvellous contestants, and thank you at home. Till we see you next week, take care. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. You're going to need to get your dust sheets out later because there's going to be ripped vests and wrestlers flying everywhere. It's a TNA explosion tonight at 11 on Challenge.